Hey and welcome to the second installment of the uh, lifting simulator tutorial series. Um, in this in this episode we're going to be doing something quite simple. We're going to be doing statistics for the players, so it's whatever you want to say, like we're just going to call it lifts for the number of lifts they've done. Um, and that will be saved so every time they leave the game and come back again those lifts will be kept. So we've already got our tool, if you haven't seen how we made this tool go and watch the other video. So now we're going to create a script in uh, script service and we'll call this uh, call stats. As always you can name the script whatever you want and the first thing we want to do is we're going to want to make an event for when a player joins. So game players, player adders, connect, function, actually well, let's do it the way that everyone always does it. So function uh, gives stats and we'll, argument will be player. And we'll fire this. We'll say game players player added connect give stats. Okay. So this function now runs when a player joins the game. Now the first thing we're going to do is we're going to want to create a leader stats object in the player, which is going to be local leader stats equals instance new leader stat. Oh, sorry, <laughs> instance new folder player. And we're going to want to name leader stats. Uh, leader stats. And it has to be called leader stats because otherwise it won't uh, display as your as your statistics. Um, and then we're going to create a lifts value. Um, and that's going to be called that, what that's going to be is a um, int value. That's a number basically. Um, and it's going to be, we're going to call it just lifts. Okay. Now we're going to want to get any previous data the player might have. So we'll uh, get data store service. I just call it DS. Get, so we're going to game get service, data store service, and we've got data store service. Then we're going to create a data store for our stats. So we'll go stats store is equal to DS, get global data store, and we're going to call this. Uh, let's see, just stats, player stats, let's call it, yeah? Okay, now we're going to want to, for this sake of this tutorial, we'll create a function. So we'll say function get player data, player, and this in this function we will get, we'll try to get the player's data. And the, the most reliable way to do this is to say repeat, um, and then we're going to, well, before we do this actually, we need to assign two variables. So we want to say, the first of which is going to be um, success, and the second is going to be um, data. And neither of these, so it's going to be false and nil. Um, there is another way of representing this, but it's not really uh, it's not really as easy to understand. Anyway. So what we're going to do is we're going to say p call, which is like a fake, uh, which, which basically runs code and it means it won't error. And we're going to say success is equal to p call, um, this function. And what is going to happen inside this function is we're going to assign data to stats store get async, and then player, and then well let's just say data, and then the player's user ID. Okay. And what this does is it gets the player's data or whatever, well, it gets this value in the data store which we will be storing the data, player's data under. And to see if this succeeded, because this can error, we say until success, which basically says until uh, the request was, was successful. But because this will just run continuously if something goes wrong, we will add a slight weight there, of weight two. Okay, and then we're just gonna return data. Um, what we're also gonna do is we're going to add a uh, we're going to add a, a value in the player here, and that value is going to be called loaded, which is going to be a bool value, which is like true or false, and we'll call it data loaded. Lo uh, loaded name equals data loaded, and this will be um, false. Also, we need to add, put this in the least that's folder, and we need to put this loaded value in the player directly. So what we want to do here is that when the player when the player's data is loaded, we're going to say player dot data loaded, which is the 
that value we just created, value equals true. So that means that the game knows for later use by us that the player's data is loaded. The reason you do this is for make, making sure you don't save over someone's data. Um, a lot of people have data saving problems and it's either because they're um, not doing this, which is where you make sure you, it doesn't error when you first request it, or they are saving the data um, when it hasn't loaded yet. So, now we've done all this, we're going to call that function to get the data. So we'll say local data is equal to get player data player. Um, and then we need to check if that data is nil, if that data doesn't exist. So if data equals nil, then data equals zero. So in this case, we're just going to be storing the number of lifts the player has. Uh, realistically, in a not proper game, you would probably store a, a uh, an array here or a dictionary, which are two types types of data storage basically. But here we're just assigning this to zero because we want to make sure it's a, a number value, so we can add and subtract to it, to and from it, I should say. Then we're going to say lifts value equals data, and what this does is it takes that value from that we've loaded, and it saves it to the lifts value. Okay. Now. What we're going to do now is we're going to say um, we're going to make a new function called save player data and take the function, take the argument of player. And right at the beginning, we're going to say if player data say data loaded, then. And basically, if the player's data sorry, we need to say dot value because this is a value. Um, so basically, if the player's data isn't loaded, it won't run this at all. It just won't do anything. But if it is loaded, then it will save the data. So to save data, all we need to do is we want to say stat store set async uh, data. Same thing we put here, player dot user ID, and the data we're saving is going to be player dot leader stats dot lifts value. Okay, and that saves the players the number of lifts that player has. We're also going to want to wrap this in a p call because set asyncs can fail. Uh, it's not worth doing another repeat here because we'll call this function periodically anyway. So now what we're going to want to do is we're going to um, we'll call this function um, uh, we'll call this function every now and then. So we'll also say we'll create another one here. So you're saying game players player removing, which is when the player is leaving the game. Connect, um, and when the player is leaving, we'll we'll call save player data, um, and that will and and player removing gives the argument of player. So it will save the player's data when they leave. Um, and let's do it again every now and then. So we'll create a while loop. Um, let's do it right at the bottom here. So we'll say while uh, true do for player in pairs game dot players get children do. Um, and we will also add a wait here. So we may as well just uh, let's just sorry. <laughs> uh, so we're going to add a wait here actually. So this will happen. Let's say every twenty. Let's say every fifteen seconds. We'll save a a player's data. Um, I would usually not use this exact method. I would use a, a another way of doing it, but that's kind of complicated. Um, when I make these tutorials, I dumb it down a lot. I use very simple programming that may may not be as good, but it will work fine for your uses. Um, Don't tell me it's been loaded the whole time. Oh no. Yeah, okay, I'm sorry about that. Uh, should be able to see the whole screen now. Um, I've watched back through the footage, it seems like it's okay. Um, but one the one thing is that when I put a script in server script service, I was just literally creating a script here, that's all I was doing. So for the rest of the tutorial, you will be able to see the whole screen. <laughs> okay. So what we're doing here is we're creating a while loop and we're going to do it every 15 seconds. I was saying I don't usually do stuff like this. Um, I'm dumb stuff down a lot for tutorials because um, it needs to be understandable um, and it makes a lot more sense when it's dumbed down because a lot of the things I do in a day-to-day -day basis uh, I do because of things that have gone wrong in the past but it wouldn't, might not make sense to you why I'm changing, why I'm doing some things. Uh, because they're, the only reason I'm doing them is because of a very specific situation I've had in the past. Anyway, so what we're going to do here is we're going to do every 15 seconds, we're going to call save player data on that player. Now, let's give it a test. So 
we're going to have to publish this because to create a, a data store, you need um, the place to be published. I'll publish it under the, uh, oh no, sorry, uh, this one, no, <laughs> this one. I'll publish it under the place I publish all of my tutorial games. Um, so we'll call it Lifting Simulator Tutorial Public. And we also need to go to advanced. Oh no, maybe we can do this. Maybe I think we can only do, only do this on the website. Also allow copying here, just because uh, so so people can so you guys can uh, view the code. So we'll create the game. Um, and to be able to access data stores, we need to uh, enable data store access by the uh, by the by the game. So we'll just wait for this to upload first. So now we need to go to the website. So I'll just copy this link here, um, and we're going to go to Roblox. Oops, my computer's lagging out a bit there. Okay, we're going to go to Roblox here. I'm going to go to Create, which is basically the develop page. I'm going to go to the game, which is on under Steady on Roblox, um, and we're going to configure game here. We're going to go to here, and it says Enable Studio Access to API Services. I'm going to take that and we're going to click Save. The reason for that is it allows us to use uh, data stores in game. So now we're going to join the game. And you can see immediately I have uh, zero lifts. We haven't implemented lifting properly yet. So it's not going to give me any lifts when I do this. That's in the next episode. But if we go to the server and we change this lift value, um, there we go, and we say I have 999 lifts, we can now see I have 999 lifts. Um, we'll just wait a bit for it to, to deal with the saving. Actually, I'll leave the game. So we'll leave the game. Very slow. There we go. And we'll join again. Um, and you can see it's saved my 999 lifts. And that will work for every one of your players. Um, so that's the end of this tutorial on um, the statistics side of things. To m the next episode will be on... Um, what will the next episode be on? Next episode will be on actually making it so that when they lift, or in my case, it looks like they're having an electric shock, whenever they have an electric shock, it will uh, give them a lift. Um, and that, those lifts will save, of course. So, sorry, I just hit my microphone. I'll see you in the next episode, um, and bye. And make sure to like and subscribe, uh, and turn on notifications. I don't really know why you'd want notifications from my channel. They're just tutorials. Uh, but anyway, like and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye.